Okay, so we are on FP2, Chapter 2, and this is groups. It's sometimes called group theory, and really this is going to feel like a very different type of maths when you first study it. I think this really kind of stands out from the rest of anything that we've studied, perhaps similar to number theory in that way. And rather than studying new techniques, we're actually going to be studying mathematical structure. And what we do is we consider how many things around us, um, sorry, we consider how many things around us, although appearing very different, are structurally identical. So this is kind of like a weird thing that we're studying structure rather than like the skills. It's not like calculus where we're trying to learn how to do something brand new. We're actually trying to look at underlying structures. And this is a bit of a, an unusual feeling at first. It's going to feel quite strange that we're learning more about why things work in a particular way rather than actually like how they work, if that kind of makes sense. And this is a totally normal feeling for it to feel a bit unusual at first. And in a second, we're going to have a look at this example that we have of a group that we have here, which is obviously the whole thing we're looking at. But I'm very briefly going to just take you through what the actual structure of this topic is. We look at something in the first exercise called the axioms for a group. I'm going to take a long time to go through this because it has so much information in. But I guarantee if you go through my methods of how we learn this, you're going to feel really strong on this topic. Ta um, exercise two, we do Cayley tables and finite groups. It's a very, very popular part of this topic in exams. We then look at order and subgroups. And then the A2 section is something called isomorphism, which we will actually touch on in the second video of this playlist. Now, before we have a look at this thing that we've got here, no, we'll look at this thing first and I'll talk to you about this writing that I've got. So here I have got an example of a group. And inside this group, we have different elements. Elements are basically members of a group, a bit like members of a set. And actually, this is a set of numbers that we have here. And the set of the, the elements are 0, 1 and 2. Now, it's not just a set, it's a group and a group is different to a set because it fills, fulfills certain particular properties. Now there's a lot of strange stuff that goes on here. We also have an operation and this operation is called star. This operation could represent loads of different things potentially. It could be add, subtract, multiply, divide. It could be modular arithmetic. It could be modular multiplication like we did in chapter one with number theory. Or it could be something completely else that is randomly defined or defined in a particular kind of way. But what this operation does, star, it'll be different every single time potentially, is it combines two elements to form a third. So here, when you combine zero with zero, you get zero. Zero with one, you get one. Zero with two, you get two, etc., etc. With all of the possible combinations that we have of these three elements that we have, we've obviously got nine different ways um, of combining these three elements that we've got here. So, and obviously this is because the, the order matters in this particular case. So with these kinds of things that we've got here, which element appears to not do anything for the kinds of results that we've got? Well, it looks like when you have zero and you star it with zero, you get zero. So it doesn't look like that did anything. When you have one and you star it with zero, you just get one. When you have two and you star it with zero, you also just get two. So it looks like when you do stuff with zero, it doesn't really change anything. Look here, when you have one and it gets starred with zero, you just have one and two starred with zero also just gives you two. So this element which doesn't seem to do anything is zero. And the name of this element in this particular case is going to be the identity element. The identity element, you can kind of think about that that we've come across in other parts of maths before. The identity in multiplication is one because when you multiply something by one, it doesn't really do anything. And with addition, you can think about the identity element being zero, because when you add zero, it doesn't do anything to the number. Well, I wonder if there's anything that we can work about what work out what star is actually doing here. Well, let's pretend it is just one of the, the simple kind of operations, add, subtract, multiply, divide. Which of those does it look like it could be? Just maybe by having a look at these sort of first five that we've got here. I think it looks like it's something to do with addition, right? I think it looks like something to do with addition. Zero plus zero is zero, zero plus one is one, zero plus two is two, one plus zero is one, one plus one is two. And then this is where it gets a bit difficult. So the two plus zero is two and the two plus, oh, these three here, these are the ones that don't seem to fit that pattern that we've got. Well, I wonder if we can think about what might have gone on here. One plus two and two plus one, we would expect it to be three but it's given us zero. And two plus two would expect it to be four, but it's given us one. 
this has given us something where it's adding, but it is adding it with a modulo 3. This is addition modulo 3. Now, obviously, you need to have studied chapter 1's um, number theory. This is modular arithmetic. Anytime that it goes above 0, 1, or 2, it kind of loops back around and saying what that remainder would be if it was divided by 3. So 1 plus 2 would be 3. And the remainder when divided by 3 is 0. 2 plus 1 is 3, gives you a remainder of 0. 2 plus 2 is 4, and it gives you a remainder of 1 when divided by 3. And then my last question is, what do you notice about all of the results of the binary operation? So the thing I'm actually talking about are these ones that we have here. And I'm hoping what we've noticed about all of the results of this of this star operation, sorry, I called it a binary operation, which I'll talk about later on, but the results of all these parts that I've highlighted in yellow, they are all originally things that are inside the group. So I'm going to say, what do you notice about all the results of the star operation? I'm going to just say the results are all elements in the group. And that's a really fundamental part of what we have in group theory here. Now, in the next video, I'm going to talk about actually really why that I'd like a proper context rather than something that's really abstract like this. But for now, we can start to see some of the, the key things that will come up in this topic. We have an identity element. We have some kind of operation. We have the fact that all of the results are all members of the original group. We would call that something which is closed. And we're already starting to get a bit of a feel of what group theory might be. And trust me, the next video I'm going to do on this is going to really pull together all of group theory because what I've done is I'm actually teaching things a little bit differently to the textbook, at least in the first part. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to teach most of the chapter, including the A2 content, in a couple of big examples. And then what I'm going to do is we'll delve deeper into each subsection to understand them more deeply. And I hope this is going to make group theory more interesting and less scary because sometimes the way it's taught in the textbook is very, very abstract. And then you get to the end and there's a couple of nice sort of real context examples. But actually, it's a bit late at that point because you haven't understood it up until that point. So if you stick with me in the next video, we're going to be having a look at an example to do with transformations of triangles. And then we're going to be having a look at an example to do with a game with cups where you are shuffling cups around. And we're going to try and use this to demonstrate loads of the properties of group theory so that when we learn the properties in a little bit more detail in the rest of the playlist, it should make way more sense and hopefully will make group theory much more interesting as well. So I shall see you in the next video.